Hello! Hi. We are back once again. And today, this is this is actually this is this is from a hex up a while back, but it was so interesting that I really wanted to talk about it. Greenheart Games, uh, they're an independent game developer. They made Game Dev Tycoon, which is like Roller Coaster Tycoon, only you're a game developer. I actually bought Roller Coaster Tycoon. But Roller Coaster $1. Tycoon 50. is awesome. Yeah, I still I still play Roller Coaster Tycoon. But the interesting thing the interesting thing about it is. They put out a pirated version. On, on purpose. On purpose, on a couple of torrent sites. They, they, they leaked it. Except it had a slight change. Which was that once your company started becoming successful, they would start, people would start pirating their whatever game you had developed. And you would lose money. And you would just continue to lose money yeah, until was, your studio collapsed. There was no way to be profitable once the pirating no. started. And it was interesting because... You would see people then show up on forums and message boards, and they'd be writing, and they like the, the articles and stuff. They linked the, the, these these posts where people were like, uh, you know, oh my god, uh, I made a good game company. I've got a great game. It was everything was going so well, but there then if people started pirating it. What do I do? Uh, and that kind of stuff. And it was just so <laughs> funny to read about this. It was well, an like, interesting can, can experiment. We, can we research DRM, digital rights <laughs> management? That's what we need. That was and yeah. and I mean these are the same people who who would otherwise rage about DRM on actual games. Yes. Um, and to be fair, I'm not a huge fan of, of DRM. But at the same time, I understand that piracy is a real problem Yeah. Uh, for a lot of companies, especially independent ones. Yeah. Well, and he went into that. Like, um, the guy who was talking about said he mentioned that it was as a gamer and as a developer, he thinks it's really funny that people have these kind of reactions. Um, something like... 3,000, he had some numbers, I forget what they are, they'll be in the article, we'll link it. Um, but, you know, let's say like 3,000 people pirated the game and like 80 people bought it. And he said, uh, as, as a business person, I find this disappointing and, and, and a little disheartening, but as a developer uh, who is also a gamer, he found it absolutely hilarious that yeah. people were complaining about the piracy and, and sort of, I think it, hopefully it sort of made some of them look at it a little bit differently and realizing the kind of impact piracy can have. I mean, probably not. No, but, but I mean, and especially since, I mean, a lot of the games people are itching to pirate and a lot of games that, that have really strong DRM are AAA games that yeah. cost millions of dollars to create. More importantly, they're, they're run by large companies, so people sort of don't see the impact of that. But on yeah. independent game studios, I mean, every every sale counts. That's right, for sure. And I remember... Well, one interesting thing this has done, though, for, for Greenheart, is it gave them a lot of publicity. Mm -hmm. um, as soon as the story aired, just after a couple of the uh, the Let's Players who I watched, like, they all picked it up and they were all playing it, right? And it's... and I have a copy. So, yeah, hopefully it'll, it'll increase... I want to get a copy. Uh, hopefully, it'll increase kind of awareness of the of, of of the company and of the game. So I think maybe in the end, it was probably a good move. Um, well, I think really it was, kind I think of uncanny. Brilliant. I think it was brilliant. Yeah, but um, no, the 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 I, I and I I mean I am a reformed video game pirate. I also may or may not be a reformed video. Yeah, pirate. I mean we used to pirate a lot of games. Everything. Well, we you know I just. Like the, the, we've talked about this before. Um, I just we could probably link an episode of the Educated Imagination. Probably we talked about this, or we talked about copyright. Yeah, something like that. Anyway, but and it's the kind of thing where, you know, we had all the excuses. Oh, we don't have any money. Uh, oh, you know, they're going to big companies. Uh, we weren't going to pay for it anyway. You know, the, the the gamut of excuses that most people give. Um, but I think now that we're sort of um, grown up, real people with with jobs and. Uh, a sort of a wider appreciation of how things work, um, and of course Steam. Uh, I don't pirate anything anymore. No, I um, mean, it was, it was part of like uh, Gabe Newell has this, uh, this famous quote: "He said piracy is a distribution problem." Yeah, and it's true. I mean, once I got Steam, I stopped pirating games. But also, I mean, the the big statement I made was was you know, oh well, I I'm not going to buy it anyway. I mean, yeah. when I was a starving student or that kind of thing, and I think that I think I still think there's something legitimate to that 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 you especially if it's something you will really benefit from yeah that isn't it isn't directly costing people and they i'm i'm really want to hedge on this because I, I i haven't thought in depth about it and i'm i'm not gonna you know say that it's 
morally okay or anything like that, that you are definitely in the right if you do that. I think that would be going a little far, but I think it's at least there. there's some some interesting things you can say about that kind of rationalization. For, for me, the example I would use is comic books. I was also a notorious comic book pirate, and I read a lot of comic books while I was working on papers and working on finals and that kind of thing, and because they were, they were a quick read, and I love comic books. I just, and I really, I have really benefited from that. But I, I could not have afforded all the comic books that I, that I read. Yeah. But what I do now, now that I'm finished my degrees and I have a real job and I have real money, is every week or so I go to the comic shop and I buy a couple of comic books because now that I am in a position to pay for those things that I have previously enjoyed, I feel like I have a responsibility yeah. to support the people who made them. Yeah. So that they can make more. I mean, and this is and this is especially true with with I mean, independent studios and independent game developers or, or independent anything really. I mean, but even like, and the nice thing about Steam like that for video games is you can get stuff on sale. Like what I do is I, I earmark a couple titles for the coming year that I'm going to buy mm -hmm. right away. Like there's always something you really want to play. You know what? And I will pay sixty bucks for a couple of games every year, but not. All of them. Let's say I want six games in a given year. I'm going to pay 60 bucks for two or three of them. The rest, I will wait. Mm -hmm. I will wait six months. I will wait eight months. I will wait till there's a sale, and I will buy it then. Yeah. Right? And that's just patience. You know, you got to sort of hedge yourself out. And, and you know, I buy a lot of little stuff along the way. Uh, I buy a lot of old stuff that I used to play when I was a kid. I buy a lot of indie games. Um, you know, that kind of thing. And it's, it's not really a big deal. I buy games that I already have pirated copies of. Yeah, I've done that. Uh, I think uh, Galactic Civ 2, I, I pirated that game. It was probably the last game I pirated, and I had so much fun. The first time I played that game, I think I stopped like six hours later, I got so absorbed, and I went out and bought it immediately. Yeah, um, I just... Because it's just, I, like, I felt super bad for ripping off Stardock for this, this game that just was so good, and I, I went and purchased it right away. You know, and that's... I did that for a while where I would kind of try something out. If I was going to pirate it, then in the end, I'd probably wind up buying it, and then... Yeah, and now I mean, I I mean again, I, I think that, that that much more piracy is sort of well intentioned. Yeah. Well, and I, you know, what, I think part of what you said about know. it being a distribution problem is true. For instance, let's say uh, the most pirated TV show right now, easily Game of Thrones. Yes. Right? And part of that is because it's an HBO show, and a lot of people don't have easy access to HBO. They're not going to pay I don't know how many dollars to get freaking HBO just to watch Game of right. Thrones. Now, if you could every week. Give somebody somewhere two dollars or three dollars to get an episode of Game of Thrones. Would you do it? And the answer for me is hell yeah, right? Like, and, and you should be able Fair to. Like, yeah. And if you could come up with a distribution, like, and they're they're getting better. Things like Netflix and Hulu, you know, where you can get that digital stuff for mm -hmm. a reasonable price. It's getting better um, right now. Uh, we're watching the new series of Arrested Development, which came out only on Netflix. Only on Netflix, yeah. You know, and it's great. And if I could just pay per episode, or if I could pay something per show, or just get the content that I want rather than paying an exorbitant price for a whole bunch of stuff I don't care about, you know, I would be. I think a lot of even Game of Thrones fans would be definitely willing to pay for it. They're freaking hooked. Oh yeah. Well, and YouTube is looking at at implementing something like that for for. Sort of a select. They're, I think they're pilot testing it right now. Hank Green did a video on it a while back. I will totally link that. But he, they did a video. They, 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 they're implementing a program where channels can can go pay. Okay. So you pay a small subscription fee, and that goes to you know or a percentage of that. I think it's I think it's forty percent. Uh, Hank knows for sure. It's it's in the video. He's much more of an expert on it than I am. Um. But that goes directly to the creators, mm -hmm. and again, it, like like YouTube is really fascinating to me because it's all about. And they they have some ad revenue sharing programs on there already, don't yeah. they? Yeah, we have an ad revenue sharing program. There we go. That's I what that advertisement that. is. Some of that money that you from, from you watching it goes to us. It doesn't cost you anything. I have not seen any of this money. I've no, I'm sorry. Right, neither have I. But <laughs> <laughs> some of you know, some tiny fraction of that comes to us, and and eventually. You know what I'm going to send my four pico cents on. What? I don't know. Something very small. Ooh. Uh, it's their pico sense. Like, they're, like, it's got to be what, a pico sense. Le leave what your what Dan should sp send his, spend his pico sense on in the comments down below, and we will see you in two weeks. We got to find a better way to do that because every time you point down, you're just pointing at your wang. 
Cause I'd love you even if we were being chased by a horde of zombies. I'd never leave you behind.